Yes. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Karen White. Um, a partner at Baker McKenzie Johannesburg office and I've been quite involved in the renewable energy program as well as the coal base load program going forward. I fully endorse everything that Charles has said. Um, I would just like to add a, a couple of things is hopefully the procurement program that you get involved in, first of all that there's the political will to see the program through and that there's a champion in order to do that and I think in the REIT program we were fortunate with the RPP office in the form of Karin Breitenbach that we did have that. The other thing I think what we, we hope that we will find is that there's utility support for the procurement program. And obviously in the South African context, that was ESCOM. Is it fully behind the program or does it have its own reservations? And what's the tension like between the utility and the DOE, which was the procuring agency? I think is in all these projects, you have to understand that it's a jigsaw puzzle. And if you get one piece of the puzzle wrong, you're not going to finish the jigsaw, and it's not going to happen. And at the end of the day, it's also going to be all about project finance and the bankability issues. And if you, all the counterparties in the transaction don't understand the fundamentals of project finance, we're going to have a long and protracted discussion on various documents. We need to also appreciate the procurement program and how rigid is it and how is there integrity to that uh, procurement program so at the end, as soon as you bring in the international side, you bring in all the compliance issues that go with that. And if the compliance issues can't tick the box, there's not going to be any lending coming into South Africa from elsewhere. You need to also understand the regulatory framework of the project that you are operating under. And you have to fully understand it and all the policies as well. In our case, under the renewable program, you needed to know what was going on because if there was a change, you wouldn't get any relief. So it's all coming down, and I think, Charles, you touched on it, it's all about cost and time. And if you don't get the right team, and you don't have a fully integrated advisory team, there's going to be problems on time, and that's going to equate itself into costs. I think you also need to appreciate what's the financing plan for the developer? What are they doing? And what's the financial model? And the financial model becomes very important because that's what the shareholders look at, and that's what the bankers are going to look at. And for every thing you give up in a negotiation or thinking of giving up in a negotiation, you need to understand what's the impact on the financial model, if any. So you need to appreciate the risk appetite. You need to do a risk analysis. You need to understand your fundamental documents. And then I think you don't need to reinvent the wheel. If there's standard documentation that works, keep to it. If it doesn't work, then change that which needs to be changed. We had experiences, we got to round three and a half of the renewable program, and all of a sudden people wanted to start changing all the legal opinions that had been given previously. And when you showed counterparties, but this is the opinion you accepted last time, they wouldn't accept it this time. And that could also be true across the board on that. So there's a value chain that you need to understand where it's all coming from, how it flows down to the EPC and the ONM. There's some opening remarks. Thank you, Kieran. Doing business in Africa. You can't afford to be without Africa Investor.